you're doing something in a, a minor mode, it will touch people's hearts a lot quicker than a major mode song. Mm -hmm. You know, emotionally. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like minor you, mode is usually your ballads, right? You correct. Know, your, Man, every rose has its thorn. Exactly. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. And it just, you know, it gives you this, this sad feeling that, but you can relate to it. Because yeah. That was a very outdated reference. Uh, Rihanna stay is a better reference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Most hits to me, though, uh, big hits. Mm -hmm. A lot. If if you're a writer, uh, producer, you should be in. There has. I don't think there's any scientific evidence of this, but some of the biggest hits ever in all music mm -hmm. were in. If you look at the history of the number one hits, minor mode seems to be one of the bigger hmm. uh, feeling when you when you're w for number one records they were in the minor mode well there's a reason for it because that touches people you go back to the early 50s yeah and it just seems like you know those were the biggest records were the ones that were I mean there were obviously big right. records on me happy records but the minor records, the minor mode records, yeah. seem those to really touch the soul. Yeah, and they yeah. seem to be the ones that play most on the radio. Yeah. They seem to make the most money. Yeah, yeah. It's the only guy that's gone against the grain on that though is Max Martin, though, right? Because he somehow does the happy records yeah, and somehow boy. has that dialed. He does have you that dialed I mean? in. The dude's a genius. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm sorry, and he's not even from here. Okay, yeah, our pop music that everybody's familiar with our pop music in the United States. Yeah. That's all from a Swedish man, okay? <laughs> Done in Sweden, I think. That's where Max is. But it, it, there's something to be said about that. He gets it. Yeah. I think he understands the major minor deal. I wonder if Trump will debate about that tonight. Like, even our top music is from a Swede. America, we got to make America great again. <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> That'd be amazing. That'd that be would a be hell hilarious. Of a <laughs> oh, Slim Shady LP came out, mm -hmm. right? Followed by the Marshall Mathers LP. Right. The there was a small change between, mm -hmm. musically it was similar, but the small change came in the sense of it was a more serious album, not, not it was darker. The Marshall Mathers LP was darker. I thought so. Okay, but the, I'm talking about also how he carried himself too, so, right? We're so talking he, about all that. Yes, yeah, yeah. he was carrying himself as a star. Okay, okay. But everything was cool, like he, you know, it, it, he was still on Eminem. Yeah. And, and he was touring already, you know, mm -hmm. things like uh, that stars do. And he was living that life. Yeah. You know, money started to come in. Yep. You know, something that was very foreign to all of us. Mm -hmm. So you started to make a living now. Well, obviously your lifestyle changes. You know, now you can afford a hamburger. You know what I mean? You don't have you to can, cook them anymore. Right, you can, you can actually, actually yeah. have a house. You can own a house now yeah. instead of wow. some little apartment somewhere. Wow. And so life started happening. Mm. You know, and you, then you have more responsibilities because now you have kids. Mm. You know, because the babies that, you know, were babies when we started off are growing. Now they're growing. So, um, did, did you notice Jimmy the Iovine had said to us during the success of Slim Shady LP, mm -hmm. he had said to us, he says, yeah, you guys are going to make, you're going to have house money. And we're like, we, we don't do house music. It's hip hop. He goes, no, no, no. You don't know what I'm saying. You're gonna make have house money. House money is money enough to buy a house. We're like, yeah, right. You weren't buying it. I know. You didn't I, buy it. Wow. Because it, it takes a long time to see your money. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It, you it's have to true. recoup everything. That, Absolutely. Yeah, we were blessed though to sell so many records that you recouped we, quickly. Very quickly, every album. Wow. We, we were selling. You got to remember that. Back in the day, can I just tell you, like that Marshall Mathers <laughs> LP was sold on 1.7 million in first eight, week. Four. Yeah, and That's the week incredible. wasn't even a full week. But there was a time where me and M could sit down and write a song, and I knew that was a hit record. Hmm. I knew in something inside of me that this is, because uh, I always kept in mind what what were your fans like. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, so, and I knew that this particular song was a. A smash hit record. Your fans are gonna love this. You know, I worked at Interscope for a while, right. and I was I always thought how how uh, blessed an artist was that was big enough on the label at the time to be able to just turn in an album. Like if you're a U2 or a No Doubt, you pretty much just turn it in. You turn it in. You're done. You know, but all the other artists, you know, you, am I right? You're beholden politics, the whole thing. Absolutely, and it, and yeah, you're right. right. Yeah, yeah. I know, but you yeah. know, look at the truth of the matter. If it, if it wasn't for No Doubt, U2, mm -hmm. uh, 
whoever else was. Nine Inch Nails even. Nine I mean, Inch they Nails. were turning in. But yeah. because of them, <clears throat> we got a chance. Because mm. the money was made so they could put the money now into That's the true. next artist coming in. That's true. Who, we're blessed that it was Eminem. Yeah. But then Eminem opened doors for the next kids coming out. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's how the record business Absolutely. worked. Absolutely. You know, 50 now, being one of those artists. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. I mean, what happened to 50, right? Yeah. Right? So he um, fell into the same thing after M, 50 became a monster. Yeah. But, you know, they the big artists paved the way for the younger artists coming in. You got to make the absolutely. money. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, you know so. leave the door open for the next. You have to. You have to, man. Yeah. Um, well, you know, and, and you leave your ego at the door, too, because that doesn't really work so well. No. That's... It could be tough, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so take so so basically picking. So up, here he is. Yeah. So we're the fourth album. Yeah, fourth album. Uh, encore. I didn't work on it at all. You didn't work on it. My at all? production team did not. We didn't really um, physically participate in the writing of that. So how album. did that how did that happen? I mean, that's just a natural question, right? You guys got this great chemistry. Things are working. So life happened. Life happened. So, you know, I had some family issues that I had to deal with. So I had to back away, bring in Louis Rusto, who's another writer. Mm -hmm. And he came in and started filling the, the void of me, my mm -hmm. production. Uh -huh. And so he was doing his thing on that album. A Detroit guy, Louis Rusto, Oh, yeah. Right? He's, a, yeah. he's yeah. a Detroit. I've known him since the late 70s, early you 80s. You brought him in, obviously. We brought right? him in, yeah. yeah. We brought him in as a, as a, not a writer, but as a, more of a musician. Because he's an incredible keyboard player yeah and when it you have to do this we call it like put the sprinkle on at the end of the song you have to add the extra little dings and stuff yeah he's brilliant at that so he he was brought in for that stuff but during that fourth album i was away mm. i was handling family business mm. and uh lou stepped in and he started doing some writing with m at that time and uh that was another change for marshall shift change you know, maybe they weren't quite sure where they wanted to go with it. Mm -hmm. And I think that that album was trying to be funny. You know what I mean? Like, there was a yeah. lot of things on there that was... You had the comic, the insult dog, we were yeah, talking. Yeah, right. Yeah. It, was, it was a shift. It was, it was a shift. Like, so now you got pop, pop culture yeah. with, with that stuff happening. Yeah. And what, what, what was, what's his name? Uh, Bruno. He, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, right so yeah. they did that Sasha whole... Berry. Sasha Barry Cohn, right. So he... So, you know, everything started happening at the award show with the, you know, like it was, now Eminem was a funny dude. Yeah. But he is a funny dude. <laughs> but no, don't force it to be funny. He's right. a funny dude, but you don't force it. But I think they were- It went, it went a little corny, because it, it felt forced, I guess. That's probably right. Right, if you want to look back uh, yeah, now, yeah, yeah. it felt he, forced. Yeah, and he was, was more, I guess, playful in the Slim, Slim right. Shady LP, it was, yeah. It was, he was playful in the first album, yeah. but more like, uh, with an edge. Playful with an edge and from an authentic place or something, if exactly. that makes sense, right? Yeah, it, yeah. It's a good way to put it mm -hmm. because then it, it almost became like, oh boy, here's the circus boy. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And the comic, the dog thing was cute, but enough. Yeah. You know, the, my personal opinion. I agree. So, but, you know, I, I, um, I mean, I, I just didn't work on that album because the direction wasn't exactly what uh, I loved, but I removed myself from it mm -hmm. for family purposes, and uh, you know, I'm not saying that that's because it happened like that because I wasn't involved. I'm just that's what happened. Yeah, you know that that I couldn't be there at that time, so this is what the end result was. And you know, I know nothing. About, I don't. I can't recall sales or anything. It doesn't really matter. People can draw their own conclusions, obviously, Correct. what that means. But you know, I, in my opinion. You obviously had a, a strong influence, you know, because it seems like. Well, thank like you. It, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. And I think that uh, <clears throat> um, that album. There was some moments on the encore album that there's a few songs that I know that I thought were brilliant, you know. And that was. Like, oh, I wish he did more of that, but I wasn't in, you know, there to yeah. like suggest it. <laughs> so it, you know, it was kind of disheartening for me a little bit mm -hmm. because the the emotional part of it wasn't there anymore. Because mm. I think I think that yeah, Louis and him made it had uh, emotional connection. Because I know there's a couple of songs that are unbelievable, um, unbelievable. But as a fan, going out and buying that album, yeah, something was missing. I'd agree. And I talk to people all the time about that. 
uh, I don't get into like, oh, why, why did you write on it or anything like that? You yeah. Know, I don't talk about stuff like that, but I t just talking as a fan. Sure. And they'll, they'll say what they didn't feel. And that hurt me because everything else up to that point, you felt. Mm -hmm. It's not about, I didn't feel that so much, but there were, you felt everything. Even if you didn't really like the song, yeah. you still felt something. There was an emotion that you couldn't deny. Right. Yeah. And maybe so, that maybe that didn't really have it, uh, you know, with the fans. I don't know, but obviously, he's an icon, and so you had an album that wasn't great. So what? A lot of people have that. Yeah. It happens. Of course. You're, you should be blessed. You know that you're here. You are 19, uh, 2016. Mm -hmm. You're you're still kind of relevant. That's, yeah. You know, I mean, he, that's he, unheard of, basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Think about that. Yeah. 16, 17, yeah. almost 20 years since Infinite. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty incredible to still be here in hip hop. Yeah. That's I mean, true. yes, you got. Um, you could probably count on two hands, maybe, the people yeah, that mean, started their career, you know, yeah. when he did, yeah. who are still relevant now. He, right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you got Jay, right? Yeah. Jay Z is, he's been around for, Nas right. has been Nas, around forever. Yeah. Uh, Dre has been around Trey's here. still there. He's still there. But... Maybe Lil Wayne. Yeah, Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne has relevance still, so yeah, he was no, there. Yeah, no, I think he did come out yeah. in like 98, 99. He, he was the same era, yeah. Cash money thing or mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, you know, the new guys, like, I consider Drake a new guy. You know what I mean? He's even a new though, guy. He's even new. though he's been around for a little bit now. Yeah, but, but he didn't break until like 2008 or 2000, correct. yeah, later. Right, so the early dudes. Yeah. You know, um, you're right. You can count them on your hand. That's it. There's not a lot. I'm struggling for one hand. I mean, imagine two hands. Well, I, I was just trying to it's think. Like, yeah. There isn't a lot. No. You know, I mean, you got Missy, your... I mean, Missy Elliott was kind of that era, but she kind of lost some relevancy. I mean, she just hasn't really it's been like putting Cube. anything It's out, like you know? uh, Cube, right? Yeah. I mean, what, you know, and he... he no. Right, you don't really hear much about him. No. You don't hear him much... But Cube sort of, like, evolved into this actor. Correct. He's doing that, really well, yes. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Correct. He could have stayed. Yeah. Uh, same thing with LL. Same thing. Yeah. He could have oh, been relevant yeah. too, but you know he, the movies were bigger yeah. for him. Also, they're seeing the sales do this, right? Right. So and what they're they, like, yeah, it's, it becomes smart a business no like yeah, yeah. Will Smith. Yeah, exactly. You know the, those guys are exactly, well, but they're pioneers of hip hop. Yeah, you can't forget them because one of my friends is a, a he's an OG like A and R guy, um, and he's like he's like uh, I can always tell the real music people because they're the ones that would say no to film money. <laughs> Right. I mean, that's such a good barometer. It's like it is. If you're, you know, yeah. Look, look at look at Eminem. You know, he he hasn't really actor. Got, he, yeah, he could have gone. Well, he, he could he could have done anything he wants. Right. Right. What has he done? Music. Acting. Music. He's just still staying yeah. with music. That's right. That's right. There's something to be said about that because he did the acting thing and yeah. it was huge. Yes. It was a huge movie. But you know, obviously, one would think, oh, I did that. I can go do some more of that. And sure, yeah. he could have, but he chose not to. For whatever his reasons are. He's a star, a star, a star, and then, you know, whatever, I'm a music star. And now I'm an acting star. No, no. You know, it, it, at some point, it's, uh, it's all entertainment. It's and true. And that's the business you're in, the that's entertainment true. business. It's all, it's all encompassing. Star, a star, a star, and then, you know, whatever, I'm a music star. And now I'm an acting star. No, no. You know, it, it, at some point, it's, uh, it's all entertainment. It's and true. And that's the business you're in, the that's entertainment true. business. It's all, it's all encompassing. Let's flip it back just for a second. The, it just played uh, at the Michigan Big House yourself, here for yeah. the for the state. Yeah. That's just such a anthem. classic anthemic. I mean, it, it's, and it's really it's a the Detroit... top song for me. It's probably in the top three for almost every Eminem yeah. fan, I would imagine. Yeah. So can we talk about just the creation of that song, if you wouldn't mind? Mm -hmm. Like, did did he come in with an idea? Did you come in with an idea? How did what was the birth of this song? Uh, really, the birth of the song was it started with a. Uh, uh, a guitar line that uh, I came up with, and I played it uh, against the drum beat that um, DJ Head mm -hmm. came up with, a simple drum beat on the MPC, and I just kept playing to it, like, I don't even, it just, it started off with that, then I added a bass line, and so the whole groove was what the guitar that we hear in the song, this is what never leaves the song. The mm -hmm. whole time at this four bar, guitar part that There's I no played. pause on that riff? Zero. Wow. From very beginning. Yeah, I'm trying to listen for it, but yeah. So I was messing around with the in, the piano intro that we all know. Yeah. Do, 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 Is that M? Do, 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 do. 
Is that you or is that's that me. Gonna, that's you? Okay, yeah, right, but, okay. So that intro um, was put the, the the guitar and the bass and the drum. That was all that was there. That that's was, where it started. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it felt so good. Yeah. It just felt like we didn't know what it was. It's just, all we knew is that wow, that really feels good. Mm. But it wasn't until um, writing, I mean, getting a script for Eight Mile. That you just knew that fit and perfect. It came, yeah. Wow. It, it, it came Another stars play. aligning moment. Sort Another, of. <laughs> for real, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so we used to take we used to take that that little guitar part and listen to it and go, what are we what are we going to do with this thing? Mm. Because we know it feels good. And we like I was telling you before about it's the minor mode. Something about it feels amazing, and it gave it would give us chills. Mm. You know, not knowing that years later Michael Phelps would use it. You know, I mean, I don't, I couldn't tell you how many athletes use it as a motivational, not just athletes, people around the world as a motivation to go work out or. I'm going to get that job or whatever yeah. it is. It just yeah. motivates you. And the yeah. cherry on top is what that song did in the Super Bowl commercial for the city of Detroit. I mean, how right. cool is that, right? Uh, pretty incredible. <laughs> yeah. you, know, that, you know, during a time when Chrysler, the, all big, the big three were having issues. Yeah. You know, with uh, financial issues and yeah. paying back loans and all this shit. We thought that our, you know, our city was going to shit, mm -hmm. you know, because those were the big three. Um, for Chrysler, it was a huge success for them, um, and to be a part of that success, you know, um, the city of Detroit, obviously a major win kept, for the city of Detroit. So major win for city of Detroit yeah. and kept a lot of people fed, mm. and you know we feel that uh, we are a big part of that. We never went on media saying, you know, look what we helped with, you know. We didn't have to because we knew mm -hmm. that that saved a lot of people their jobs. That fed a lot of people. I never saw the finished um, commercial until Super Bowl. The Super Bowl. It's not like they, you know, Chrysler goes, "Oh, by the way, here it is. Here's a rough copy." <laughs> yeah, you didn't get that. So I'm out in Arizona on a vacation wow. with my wife, and uh, so I'm sitting there with 20 people, 30 people in a living room of somebody's house that I don't even know who they are. Hmm. None of them are from Michigan. We're the only two from Michigan. No, there was another couple there that was from Michigan. And by the end of that commercial, every one of those people said, wow, I wish I came from Michigan. And that was like humbling That's for about me. the best compliment ever, yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, literally, and, you yeah. know, because every, up until that point, people's image of Detroit was murder. Oh yeah. Racism, bad mayors. Eminem stayed here his yeah. whole career. Yeah. There's something to be said for that. Absolutely. It's a special place for us. Yeah. You know, you go where you, where the bread and butter is. Yeah. And then one, and once you you on a roll and you're making a living, you know, you you I needed to settle. People need to settle. And you, I feel we, like you chose Michigan to it's settle. Like a, it's like a squirrel. You gather your nuts in LA or New York, and then you bring them back to Detroit or something. I don't you know. do. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's, and, um, and a lot of people do that. They they will leave. Yeah. To find what they're looking for, and then they'll come back because it's always home. Absolutely. So you're on this really awesome ride. Then you said you took the break from um, Encore. Encore. Fourth Encore, album. Right. Took the break. So is that where you know things were on this upward trajectory, and then? You know, then things took a turn. You had to deal with, you know, some family stuff, you said. And then, so you went through this sort of, I guess, darker passage, I imagine. Sure, right? yeah. Uh, you know, I had family issues. I had issues. Yep. Uh, Marshall had issues, you know. Everything was sort of taking hold at the same time. Yeah, you know, you went yeah. like this, went like this, and, you know, and then life happens, and, yeah. then, you know, shit's not always beautiful. And... Um, you know, on a high like that, you know, you, if you, it goes like this. Yeah, sure. So we were on our way experiencing some down stuff. In All at the in same business. time, too. Yeah. Like, interesting, right? That, yeah. That, that just, he was and you guys were. He was doing, getting into his thing. I, I mean, that was well publicized. He obviously had drug addiction. Drug addiction. Right? Right? Well publicized. I myself, yeah, I so. myself wasn't yep. admitting to my drugs, but <laughs> yeah. I had my issues, too. Yeah. And uh, that was rock and roll for me. And, you know... 
I had to face my issues, he had to face his issues, mm -hmm. and you know, anybody that's involved in drugs or has been involved in drugs or alcohol know that it's a very difficult situation to um, recover from. Absolutely. You know, so you have to find what works for you. And you have to take the time off usually to right. do it now. In the music business, there's no such thing really as time out. No, because you got to ride because the, the wave. Yeah. The next very talented whatever, whether it's a hip hop artist or guitar player, whatever it is, they're trying to get in. They want your spot. Yeah, Plus, want your spot. also, you have the pressure from the label. You know, you where, where they need to keep the lights on and the salaries paid, That's you know what right. I mean? In fact, Steve Berman did oh, a man. skit about that. He's like, he did. he's like, when you were away from the music business, we had to fire, do you remember that skit? He's Absolutely. Like, we had to fire, you know, right. 40 people or whatever. But there, it? Even though it was funny, <laughs> funny skit, yeah. but there's truth behind no, it. No, total truth behind it, right. yeah. Because that's what happens, just like anybody, you know, uh, any individual that makes uh, a living and, you know, has a good few years of good income, mm -hmm. their lifestyles change. They might buy a bigger house, drive a nicer car, or, yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah. And then it, life happens. Not everything stays up here, goes down. But what happens? Everything stays here. You still got that house payment, that million dollar house payment, yeah. and that $2,000, $3,000 a month car payment because you're a player. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that, how are you going to pay that when your income is not even close to what it was? Yeah. That's the music business. That's the music business. And that's why you really don't go in it for the money. <laughs> you go in no. it for the love of the music and pray to God you're smart with your money. Yes. And because you are going to be like this if you can even no matter, last five years. But um, lifestyles change all the time and you have to be prepared okay. to. So you're hitting this dark cloud basically and, and you know, are, are you, I could also be an inspiration for really good music too. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the interesting thing about being a musician, well, here, right? Here's the it's, beautiful so like, part about yeah. this whole thing is that even though that particular album, because we were all, I guess you might, for lack of a better word, we were sick. Yeah. Okay, so uh, not well. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that album was over with, we didn't quit. You know, we kept. We were writing songs, like lots of songs. During the dark period. Absolutely. Yeah, right. Very, like, nah. we, I don't know, I mean, a lot of hours. Years. Years. Yeah, I mean. This period lasted a couple of years? Like, yeah. How he, many songs do you think you did, by the way? You know, like, over 50? <laughs> I bet you there was 50 tracks. Yeah, wow. With probably half of those, 25 tracks had lyrics, not full lyrics, maybe some partial lyrics. Then there was like maybe five to five to ten songs that were completed. Okay. Really good shit that still the world has never heard. And they're really amazing but songs. But he was in a dark place then, like we said, yes. right? Which was publicized. Yes. And, he was a and drug I mean I don't know if you if he's doing his best work in that space. Probably right? not. His voice was you different. Know. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So, I, so the last one of the songs that he did choose to use uh -huh. while he was intoxicated, <laughs> those days that we were wasted in the studio, yeah. was the song Beautiful. Right. You could tell in his voice, if you're a fan of Eminem, you can tell in his voice something's wrong. Mm. So if you really get to, if, if you're a real fan of Eminem and you listen to Beautiful, Listen to the tone of his voice, hmm. and there's a sadness to it. So that that was the last song that was a collaboration between him and I, hmm. and uh, it's sad, but it is. It, it is what it is. And you know, people go like this business. You know, artists. You guys had a long on. run together. Yeah, I, and like technically, I was only supposed to do one album with him, and I ended up like seven albums in. Yeah. You know, because we had a connection, we had a chemistry that we, why why break it? You know, oh. we, we loved each other yeah. enough to do what we did. It was a piece of time in the history of music that, you know, I have that connection with him that, and the fans can connect to the first. There was a sound that him and I did. Yeah. You know, it was what we called clap. Yeah. You know, classical rap joined together with his brilliant lyrics. Fit like a hand, you know, 
the perfect fit. That was the perfect fit. It was the perfect and fit. And you, you hear it in the records. You know, and I, I, I just think that, uh, well, for me, I feel blessed that I was a part of that movement, that whole Eminem movement Absolutely. From, from the very beginning. And so, that last call, again, the last call you guys had, you guys were just on different pages, obviously. I mean, yeah. to sum it up, right? You guys were in different yeah. spaces, and you guys we, weren't quite... It wasn't... Weren't quite getting each other anymore. No, say, and then right? it became a business thing. Yeah. And that's when it fucks up. Yeah, when you the business becomes ahead of the friendship and the yeah. chemistry, that's when it all it goes all, to it, shit. It yeah. all goes to shit. Yeah. And as far as my production company and him as the artist, yeah. it went to shit from there. Which is... You know, I hear it all the time. Jimmy Ivey and I actually had a conversation with me before he goes, Dad, don't feel so bad. You know, he knew I was already successful with the, all those work that I'd done for M already. Yeah. But it, so my big complaint, you know, was, you know, Jimmy, you know, like he was up on stage and he was at a Grammy Award. He was collecting the Grammy for whatever the song was, you know, and I, I didn't even get thanked. You know, so you know how that made me feel? Like, piece of shit. Like, you, you didn't appreciate that? Like That's insane. Right. Yeah. But that happened several times. Because he got a lot of Grammys, right? Yeah, he's got like, 15, yeah, 17 yeah. Grammys, right? Yeah. I mean, I have a few yeah. that, that I, I wouldn't have had if it wasn't for him. But yeah. whatever, that his outlook may have been different than my outlook. I thought you'd thank everybody, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? And, you know, to whatever his reasoning was, it, it was... You know, it was what it was, and I didn't get things. So I got hurt by that feeling. Like, I'm like, wait a second, he's achieved all this stuff with part me. You know, and I never wanted to take any credit for myself for anything. I Like, it was me and you. Yeah. Like, we did this together. How is it you get on stage there and you don't mention my name or my brother's name? Okay, that's a little strange to me. Okay, yeah. I guess, you know, maybe I, I don't know why. I couldn't even explain it. All I knew is it bothered me and hurt me, so I went to Jimmy and I said, uh, Jimmy, like, it's amazing the things that we've done, you know? I mean, this guy's made your company so much money, right? He's become a big star. But, you know, for me, it's more emotional. Like, I like, I don't get a thank you. He goes, don't worry about it. That was it, just don't worry I about I produced it. Bruce yeah. Springsteen. Yeah, and I'm like, I produced, he says, I produced Tom Petty, John Lennon. I did all this stuff, Stevie Nicks. I'm sitting right in the front row looking right at him, and they don't even thank me. <laughs> you got to say, okay. That's some real advice, though, right there. Yeah, yeah it is. Don't you know? take it to heart. Right. Although, you know, I'm a, I'm a Jewish boy from Oak Park, Michigan. I take it to heart. <laughs> You know, I guess maybe that's. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah. I so I just, I mean, I just, I just think it's important to be grateful and thankful. I'm a big believer in like, don't, you know, just don't forget where you came from. That's right. a big deal to me. I think that's a Detroit thing, isn't it? I think so. I like to think it is. And I, but I think too many people were in his ears. Yeah. To be honest with you. Yeah. He probably had a list and, you know, someone might have given him that list of people to thank. That's and, true. Because he always thanked the right people. Minus me and my brother. But that's okay. Yeah. I would really, I didn't go in it Well, the way that. you were, you know, like, I think it's, uh, you were at that Super Bowl game. I mean, that's a huge moment. Really awesome thing. You, yeah. you weren't like, hey, hey, that's me. You know, you didn't do any of that. Mm -hmm. Some people might have, you know. Hey, we yeah, I know a lot know. of people. Yeah. I know a lot of people that, that would have been more cocky about things or whatever, self-absorbed about things. Yeah. Like that. Look at, I was able to make a living doing what I love to do. Can't get much more blessed than that, you know? I'm blessed to yeah. be able to do that, yeah. you know, that beat the odds of uh, some punk that really wasn't born with a silver spoon and had to figure out a way to, to do all this without going to jail, yeah. <laughs> you know, and doing this. <laughs> you know, so I, I, I was able to succeed, you know, doing what I love to do. I can't take it that personal that, you know, the star that I helped create never mentioned me. You know, which is fine. I mean, that it hurts, but that's how life is sometimes. You know, yeah. but that it doesn't take away the impact of the work. I'll always have that. Always. I'll always have. Yeah. yeah there will always be a Slim Shady LP that I look at and I go, wow. 
I got it. I had a piece of that. I mean, that part in my heart right there. Same thing with second album, third album. You know yeah. what I mean? The greatest yeah. hits album. There'll be another greatest hits album. I know I wrote some of his yeah. greatest hits. Yeah. You know, so you know, ego wise, my ego will You're be okay. Yeah, not I'm many okay. people get to touch the world. Like right. That. You know, you touch the world. How many so, people? Yeah. How many people get to work with the best? Yeah. Rapper of all time. I know that the Lose Yourself is uh, a top, one of the, I think, top 100, in the top 100 classic songs of all time. What, whatever the genre it's in. Yeah. That's fucking awesome. That's amazing. It, it, I mean, so, like Greg says, like I, so I wrote a guitar yeah. part that someone's listening to that like says, wait, that's a classic guitar part. Just like Jimmy wrote a classic Stairway to Heaven classic guitar part, just like Eric Clapton has it, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. wow, I'm like, I mean, at some point in life, I, I, I achieved what I always heard in my, and felt in myself, and it, and it and came. That's amazing, if I would've told you that between the ages of 28 and 32, when you said things were rough, you know, food stamps, and if I would've told you that, you would've said, get the fuck out of here. I would've, yeah, said, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, so, yeah I would've said, you're, just on, to bring it you're in. on fucking drugs. Yeah. yeah. So that brings it to full full circle. It's amazing. You know, yeah, it's it, was amazing. A, it, it was a great run with M. You yeah, know, I got a beautiful wife, beautiful kids, and you know, life is. I got a couple of yeah. homes. I, I, you awesome. know, so you're living life. Yeah. So what I want to do musically is I've done everything in hip hop that you can do. You know, I've won the accolades. I've sold, I don't know how many hundreds of millions of records. Right. Yeah. So I've done all that. So now I want. What do you want to do? So, why not? Focus on something that I want to do. My wife does a lot of movies, makeup for movies. She's going to mm -hmm. be directing her first uh, movie. Nice. And so I've done a couple of so um, scoring situations for her movies and other movies. And so it's just, you know, just keep working. Just keep working. So I'm going to do this, uh, this instrumental project, and hopefully I'll pick up one fan at a time, you know, and start a little thing. I'll be in a club with 25 people. It's great. Is, <laughs> but it's fine. Is that fine. the pinnacle? Of what, like, what's what's your idea? If I say, hey, Jeff, what's the ideal, paint us the ideal picture of what this new venture for, looks like for uh, you. For, for me, yeah. uh, really selling out <clears throat> a, a Royal Oak Theater or a Fox Theater. And people want to come there to see my... Which is like a, it's like 1, 1,500 cap yeah. room or something, but right? It's, yeah, it's yeah. not an easy feat, though, you know. <laughs> know, uh, you know but, uh, um, you know, you know, and you would think that because I have succeeded so much with the world of hip hop, hip -hop yeah. that, you know, people will, you know, just be willing to do something. Like, play my shit on radio. Or yeah. It doesn't happen that way. No, it doesn't. They don't care who you are. You still have to go through the channel. It's you amazing. You gotta go through the motions. Yeah, wow. yeah. It's amazing. So uh, I have to go do it like everybody else has to do it. I've got to figure out a plan, you know, how to get one fan at so a time. So here you are back to struggling again. I am. The difference is I do have an income stream. Yeah, it's that's, not quite you know, the same. It's still coming, so yeah. I'm not starving, and I yeah. might be able to um, have a rehearsal and actually own the uh, PA system that I could use <laughs> to re as opposed to rigging one, <laughs> right? I uh, think it'll intrigue people to say, hey, here's a guy that's doing a lot of hip hop records, now he's doing this. Right. Let, me, let cool. me go check that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty cool. Like so, and, and to, to and see then, it in a different uh, light yeah. is, is also a difference, because like, I'll, I'll do like remakes of songs that I wrote, but in different versions of it. Yeah. And a good song, you could do it in a different, a million different styles. I think a I good song a, is a good song. There's a video you, I think, doing. Oh, some, messing around, with yeah, lose yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That one I done. That's not on my album, but that's a fun. I think it should be. Yeah, a lot of people <laughs> think it should be. What advice would you give to your 18-year-old self? I would tell myself never quit, mm. never quit, and really truly love what you do. Mm. I don't care what it is. That's it. And and another thing that I would say because going through a lot of issues because of drugs and alcohol and don't do it, you know. You don't need to be more creative. Some people say. It's not going to make you more, you know how some people talk about, you know, could well. Could Hendrix have done what he did without yes. the acid? Yep. Do you think he could have? Yeah, I, I'm a, I, I don't think that that, you don't, need it. you don't need it. You think you're having a different experience, you know, because it's all your uh, primitive mind aren't making yeah. all this bullshit up. What was your biggest career high? Uh, probably winning an Oscar. That's that, pretty incredible. Yeah, I mean, for <laughs> me as a musician, you know, yeah. I told you earlier about yeah. the gold record yeah. that I never ever saw, by the way. 
I saw the, pla <laughs> I saw the platinum ones, <laughs> platinum ones, but uh, being at, I was at home, I didn't go to the Oscars that year. Even though you knew you were nominated. Yeah, I was nominated, but I didn't go, I chose not to go. I, my uh, youngest was just born and I just chose not to go, mm. you know. And it's maybe something someday I'll be able to go again for, but uh, that night I didn't go and I was in my home watching it on TV. And you were being nominated for Lose Yourself. Yeah, I had no yeah. idea. I knew I was nominated. Yeah. I didn't know Barbara Streisand was going to be the, the She was presenting it? Yeah. Yeah. So when she, when I heard that she was presenting, I'm a, you know, I have, I have the chills. It's Barbara Streisand, really, seriously. Yeah. And my whole thing was, you know, is she going to get my name right? Because yeah, everybody <laughs> from up to that point, up to that point, it was like... Bass? Bass, boss, yeah. Yeah. boss, the, like, the, the fish. Yeah. Like the fish. <laughs> when she, I'm sitting at home and I, I heard her open that, I saw her open up that envelope and she said it and pronounced it right. That was it right there. Two more questions. Uh, your biggest career low? Well, having to really quit the business for a short period because of my drug addiction. Mm. Around Encore, we already touched on this, right? Yeah, but then, you know, my issues continued for it many continued years. It continued for many years beyond that. Although I'm six, six years now, six years clean. Clean? Congratulations. Thank you. That probably, because I couldn't really do anything. You know, I couldn't, I'm in a hospital pretty much. <sighs> Wow. And so I didn't really have access to recording songs or so. And my world is music. Wow. You know, like even if I don't have to uh, get up and run to a job every single day, like mm -hmm. I used to when I was working heavily with M, because yeah. at the same time I was also doing D12 and producing their records too. Yeah. So I was busy. Yeah. I mean, I was going from studio to studio to studio. And uh, up until 2010, I, I went away 2010. I remember you said if, if M called you at two or three in the morning, you were there. You know, you lived an hour. I did. You lived an hour away, and yeah. you'd be in your car. Correct. I, winter time, it shit. wouldn't matter what it was. I never said no because you never know when the next lose yourself would be. Exactly. And um, tell us, uh, last question. Tell us your favorite quote. Like, what, what's a quote that's inspired you throughout your life? I don't even know who said it. I, Quincy Jones's quote of leaving your ego at the door probably one of the most powerful things for me to see and believe, and actually believe that. And why do you think it's important to leave your ego at the door? Because when you go into a recording studio or you or or any job that you go into you, you you're not doing it alone. Nothing is about you. Mm. It's about us. Whoever's on you there's a team. There's always a team. Anybody who succeeds, anybody who does anything, there's a team. It's not you. And so leave that shit out. Just accept the fact that there's many that are better than you. And there's a greater, higher power than you. Mm. You can't do anything all alone. It doesn't work. We and are humans. We are humans. And, we, and we're really like herd animals. And our partnerships is, is everything, you know? It's, it's amazing. And, and, and looking at life, we, we're taught to do different things, to, you know, go have boys' night out, go have girls' night out, go have it. But the real issue is that, you know, everybody needs a partner. You know, some people never find their partners, but the truth is we're made to be partners. Partner, with team, too. Team, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, mm -hmm. You know, it could go for any relationship. Yeah. It takes a village. So I, I think that that's... So that's good advice for those watching, right? If you want to go... Absolutely. It's an African proverb. If, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Yeah, you see, know? that's good. <laughs> you, listen, you listened in life, you know. They, you know, you're quick with I that. Try. That's good. Yeah. But that's so true, and I, that's one of my, the best advice I can give to anybody, mm. anybody going into whatever it is they're going into. Awesome. Yeah. Jeff. Thank pleasure. you. Pleasure. Thank you I'm so much. I'm glad I was able yeah. to Thank share the story with you. Thank you for blessing us here on the Hustle Sanctuary. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in, and we'll see you next episode.